to today. I got to tell you, I have Rick Renner with me. I'm about to, to bring him on with you. But right, right now, please repost this and share this. We are going to talk about Rick's trip uh, to Noah's Ark. We're going to get into some fascinating information that I know is going to really help you and bless people you know. Please share this, if you would, wherever you can right away. I got to tell you, you don't want to miss this. And honestly, I just want to get right into it. So, Rick, thank you for being with me again. I'm today. glad to be with you, but I want to tell your viewers, when he talks about my trip to Noah's Ark, he's not talking about Kentucky. That's right. It's not Kentucky. It's not, I've never been to that one. <laughs> I've been to the real one. And it really is in the lower mountains of Ararat. Yes. It, it's... I, I've always been so intrigued by Noah's Ark, the whole story. I've done all my own research on it. And you and I had a discussion, and I felt the Spirit of the Lord saying, this is it. And Rick, I just want to thank you for your not only your, your journalism style of discovery, but then tying it together with the Bible. And I just want to get into this today. I want to look at it and, uh, and walk through it. So, well, the reason that I began this study is because Jesus says in Matthew 24, 37, mm -hmm. as it was in the days of Noah, and the Greek means exactly as it was in the days of Noah. Exactly. So shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, which means whatever was happening before the flood will be replicated at the end of the age before the coming of the Lord. And so I began to think about Noah's Ark and begin to do researches of the site, which was made famous by Ron Wyatt. Yep. It was first discovered really in 1959. Yes. Now, people have been looking for Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat right. for a long time. It is not on Mount Ararat, and the Bible doesn't even say that. You know, and you really convinced me. You changed my thinking on this just with facts, just with facts. And, and I want to thank you for that. But please, no, it's not on Mount Ararat. No, and the, and the Bible tells us in Genesis 8, verse 4, that the Ark rested in the mountains of Ararat. Well, Mount Ararat, as we know it today probably did not even exist as we know it today at the time of the flood. Interesting. Because it is a stratovolcano. Right. It's had eruption after eruption after eruption. Uh, if it existed during the time of the flood, it would have been very small, but now it's very large. And if the ark had rested on the peak of Mount Ararat, the peak would have been much lower at that time. Okay. And today it would be completely covered under lava it or it would be blown to bits. It would have destroyed whatever there was. And not only that, if it was on the peak of Mount Ararat, as people allege, mm -hmm. then all the ancient visitors who went to see it could have never gone there. <laughs> you have to have special equipment to go up there. You can't go to the top of Mount Ararat. You don't Ararat. just simply venture. To and Mount not only that, the animals... How in the world would they have come down that slope? Oh, my goodness. There's all kinds of reasons it cannot be on the peak of Mount Ararat. Such great points, Rick. But it is in the mountains of Ararat, exactly like the Bible says. So, so we have some video clips. Okay. And I would like, if you would be so gracious, to comment. Sure. I'd like to, to show them. And just, just lead us through this, if you would, Rick. It's your program, so okay. you just lead the way. <laughs> okay, so Elijah, let's put this up on the screen. Uh, this video clip, and we're just. Gonna... By the way, I have to say, Elijah is from Russia. Uh, come on! I dedicated him when he was a baby. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick Renner dedicated Elijah, our media director. Now I live in Moscow. I've lived in Russia for 33 years, and so because I live in Russia, it's real easy for me to go to these places. Yeah. That seem so fantastical. Yep. It's just a couple hours from where I live by airplane. Yeah. And so for that reason, I, I want to go to places where our precious viewing audience can never go and show them these places. Oh, and yes. that's why I went to the mountains of Ararat. And I'm going back and I'm taking you with me. Oh, I know. I know it. All right. Here's Mount Ararat. <laughs> this on. is Mount Ararat. It is absolutely beautiful. And there's actually two peaks. It's okay. a double peak. There's greater Ararat and there's lesser Ararat. Everything you see is lava. Lava. So people have been looking for Noah's Ark up here. The Ahura Gorge, right? Right. Well, yeah. and actually, they've looked for it all over. Okay. But if Noah's Ark was on the peak, mm -hmm. it means it landed on top of the last lava flow. <laughs> well, the last lava flow... It Impossible. Happened, it happens and happens and happens. Yeah. If the Ark landed on Mount Ararat, it would have been underneath all of this that you're looking at. They will never find That's it. That's logical. It makes perfect sense, Rick. And when you're there, Joseph, see what looks like is dark here? Uh -huh. This is lava and it goes way 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 out into the flood plain it's impossible for the noah's ark to have survived there that's amazing so when you hear these stories about you know i've been to noah's ark i've seen it on the right peak of Ararat. you know what the problem with all those stories are what's that they've never been verified 
None of them. None of them. Wow. Everybody who has told those stories has never been able to take anybody back to the same spot. My goodness. Never. Wow. And the reason is, it's not there. Because it, it's not there. It's about 15 miles from there, just across the valley, in the mountains of Ararat. The mountains, plural, of Ararat. Correct. Well, let's, let's continue. All right, let's go. Is this interesting? I am loving this. Thank you for doing it. Oh, you're very welcome. By the way, all this video was taken by my team. That That's is right. the ruins of Noah's Ark. Stop that. All right. From the bow to the stern, it is 300 cubits. Cubits. Which is exactly what we're told in the Bible. That's it's right. about 515 feet long. Wow. And Joseph, when you're in this location, yep. it is so immense that it is mind boggling. I mean, that's almost two football fields long. Man. It's about 85 feet wide. It's, um, I'm sorry, 50, yeah, 85 feet wide, about 55 feet high. Uh -huh. The exact dimensions which are given to us in Genesis chapter 6. Exactly. That's amazing. And now they've done all these underground uh, scans, ground penetrating radar, ERT scans, particularly focusing on this part of the ship. Okay. And now they can see rooms, levels. They can. They can even see beams. This is Noah's Ark. This it's, not, is, it's not conjecture. I am absolutely convinced. Now, look at it. Yep. When it was first found, it was found by a man that was flying over the region. Mm -hmm. There had been a big earthquake in 1959. Yep. And they wanted to make new topographical maps of the area, so they were taking aerial surveillance photos. Yep. And when they looked at the photos, they said, wait, 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 wait. That looks like a ship. Mm. Well, at that time, the edges of it were not that exposed. But later, there was another earthquake, and when that earthquake took place, all the dirt fell out from the sides of it. And for that reason, today you actually have a steep side around Noah's Ark. You have a lesser side. But geologists argued and said, no, 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 this is just a natural formation, and that stone proves it. This stone right here. Right. They say that the water and the mud just formed this weird formation around that stone. Mm. But because of the new scans, mm -hmm. they know that that stone is not original there. Interesting. That stone came down the hill with that ship or rolled into the ship. Rolled into it. It is not connected to an underground geological formation. That entire formation is separate from the terrain. Amazing. And if you look at the scans, you can even see the underground hull of the ship. Really? It is a ship setting in the middle of a mud flow. <laughs> That is amazing, Rick. Now, the, the nation, they actually declared publicly now. Well, they dedicated a, a tourist center. Okay. And uh, there's still debate. Okay, there's still debate. For different reasons. Yes. Which I don't want to get into of on course. this program. Of course. But if you talk to the official people there privately, they will say to you, it's a ship. Yeah. Now, they don't necessarily say it's Noah's Ark, but let me ask you. Yeah. What other ship would be in the mountains of Ararat that is exactly the dimensions <laughs> given to us in the Bible? That the land is moving around it and it's staying solid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. interesting. You'll, you'll see it when you go there. The best way to see it is with a drone. Okay. Something else that's interesting. And your team took this drone footage, correct? We took that and we borrowed some. I but mean, you were there. The man who's researched the site for 20 years is my good friend. He provided some of it. That's His amazing. Name is Andrew Jones. Oh. But, um, you know, some modern people conjecture that the ark was like a big barge, a big box. Yes. It was not. Yep. If you look at this, it is exactly the formation of ancient ships. It's got a sharp bow and it's got a rounded stern. Okay. That's exactly the way ships were in the ancient world. You can world. see it. You, yeah. you can actually see it. Now, if you see, Joseph, the sides of it have kind of fallen out. Yeah. Well, it's 4,400 years old, of course. I mean, <laughs> it's course. had a little time to deteriorate. Of course. But now because of the underground scans, they have found a center corridor. Okay. They found all these rooms, all these levels. They found the beams in the bottom structure of the ship. And they know now that this was like where there's a hump in the middle, probably was a, like a kind of an atrium on the top of the ship. Rick, now I don't want to get too far ahead of things, but I'll tell you, you know, I've seen some of the graphic designs you're putting together. Right. They're beautiful. That you'll begin to share with everybody in the very near future. That's going to be in my new book. That's right. And it's going to be, you guys, it's going to be awesome. You got to be looking for that. Now, what's amazing is this is a mud flow yeah. and it is mud from the flood. And from I'm telling you, the flood, it is still mud. Wow. And every spring when the snow melts, these gullies change. Everything around it moves except this. Except 
this structure. It just sits there like a ship floating in mud. Let's oh, go on. Let's keep going. This is kind of fun. Rick, I'm enjoying this. Thank you for doing it. So here, this is very important. This shows, this is, keep going. This is the bow of the ship, stop. And if you look at this, this is probably the ribs which are still sticking up from the side of the ship. Now, in 1959, when the photograph was first taken, the ground around it was even with the ship. Okay. But because of multiple earthquakes, it's fallen away. Okay. And when it fell away, shepherds begin grazing their sheep all over this. And they've really? been walking up the sides here and here. I and see. because of that, they've destroyed this part of it and this part they of it. They made a path, basically. But there's something else important, Joseph. Okay. See this cliff right here? I do. This double peaked cliff? I see it. It's right on the border of Iran. That is described in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Now somebody might say, what is the Epic of Gilgamesh? My goodness. The Epic of Gilgamesh is the oldest document in the world yep. that describes the flood. That's amazing. And in the story, Gilgamesh was a king, and we now know that he really was a king. And because the Euphrates River is drying up, they have recently come across his grave. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That's amazing, right? And he went on a big trip, and on his trip, he wanted to go to the place where the ark took place and see the whole thing. And he came to this place and wrote about it, and he described this location. Now that is just outstanding. It's in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Right here. Right here. Now, the Epic of Gilgamesh is not biblical, no. but it's older than the Bible. It's older than the Bible. and it I mean, just there, are, there are lots of documents older than the Bible. It just talks about history. It just tells history. Yep. tells about a man's experience. That's right. He went to see the builder of the ark and went to see the ark and the remains. Here it is. Yep. And there's something else. All right, Elijah, let's go forward just a little bit more. All right, stop. Joseph, point to that little mountain up on your side of the screen. Here? See that? Yes, I do. That is Iran. This is Iran. That's Iran. Okay. That is where the ark landed. Right here. Yes, and guess what it's called? The ancient name of that place is called the place of the landing. This is called, the, there's a structure or something up there. Well, that's a, that's a guard post okay. for okay. Iran. Okay. But that slope is called the place of the landing. Some ancient documents referred to it as the place of the descent. So, okay. So that's where the ark first landed. Well, how did it get from there to here? That's what I was going to ask. It's a good question. How did it get? It's a mud flow. <laughs> so over 4,400 years or so, it has moved down the side of the mountain. But because of that big rock in the middle of it, that either the side. they probably rolled into it or it might have even come down with the ark, mm -hmm. it has held it in this place. Like an anchor inside yeah. that. Structure. So when you go to the top of the mountain there, and hopefully I'll take you there, you can see a big hollowed out place in the ground and you can see where this ship first landed. Man. Something else interesting. Come on. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 10, verse 30, that the first city after the flood was called Misha. Guess what the name of this mountain is called locally? Help us. Mishar. <laughs> it's a derivative of Misha. And the first city which was built after the flood was built below this cliff. And at that very location, there are ancient, ancient ruins that date back thousands of years. It's very difficult to go there because of its proximity to Iran. Okay. But scholars believe that Noah and his sons took materials from the ark and built this location, which would have been easier for them to access when the ark was a little higher up the hill. Wow. But they built here in the shadow of the cliff because it was a place of protection. And that's where the first city was built. Now, eventually, the Bible says that Noah and his family moved further down the, the plain. Okay. And down in the plain below this site is an ancient village, which is called the Village of Eight. The Village of Eight. Yes. Eight passengers. Eight passengers. Wow. And in the Village of Eight, there is the ruins of a Byzantine church, which means it's probably about 1,700 years old. And the Byzantines built that church on that location because they said they were building the church on the foundations of Noah's house really? in the valley. Well, some people say, oh yeah, but Noah lived in a tent. Oh really, do you really think so? <laughs> the Bible says Noah lived for 350 years yeah. after the flood. Yeah. 
Well, in Genesis chapter 9, it talks about Ham coming into his tent. Right. The word tent just means a place of residence. Interesting. Noah did not live in a tent for 350 <laughs> years. He had a house. Doesn't even come from a structure like this and live in a tent. That's great. But there's something else about this structure. Of course. <laughs> of course he did. God gave that. Noah technology. Yeah. Beyond what we have imagined. Interesting, Rick. Gopher wood is probably a laminated kind of wood, which is technologically difficult to produce, but it holds out water. God really gave him everything he needed. Because the Bible said, build it out of gopher wood. Gopher, and nobody knows what it is. Interesting. Now we know it's probably a laminated kind of wood. Wow. And on this side of the ark, just but this is very steep. Okay. On this side of the ark, there is lots and lots and lots of petrified wood that's fallen from the side of the ship okay. after the earthquake. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Yes, please. You think this is interesting? I'm really enjoying this. Are you guys enjoying this? I hope you comment. Go can, can, can you see this, the size of the ship? Oh, it's massive. This is the, it's massive. Okay, keep going. And you stood there. Been all over it. <laughs> so here it is. Here it is. And this is the cliffs described by the Epic of Gilgamesh and the first ruins. Look at that. Of the first civilization. It's all there. You know, I, I'm pretty studious. Yes. And very careful about what I endorse. I'm aware of that. I believe a thousand percent in what I'm telling you. Wow. Wow. Well, this, just, this is the ark. It is the ark. Now, people who say that it's on Mount Ararat don't want to say that because they've spent fortunes and written books, uh, even made movies about looking for the ark on Mount Ararat. Yep. There's going to have to be a lot of saying we were wrong. Yes. But this is it. Yeah, and I, I, you know, without saying names or anything, I ran into an individual who toured the actual Mount Ararat several times. He looked right at me privately and said, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. It cannot be there. It cannot be there. But then here you are looking at this and the proof just keeps stacking up. The proof now is almost irrefutable. Yeah. The scientific evidence, the scans, I mean, it's just piling on top of each other to totally debunk any skeptics. Amazing, Rick. Okay, what else do we got? Yeah, here? let's keep watching. By the way, this is really rugged. The terrain. Oh, and if you go there when it's been raining, ay yeah, yeah, it is not enjoyable. Wow. Uh, this is the top of the ark. This is the bottom. This is the stern. Okay. This is the big rock in the side that goes up to the bow. Yeah. And this shows some of the underground scans. They're kind of hard to read unless sure. you have somebody to interpret them for you. But this is them scanning. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's keep going. I don't, here's some of the scans. Stop that for a Look minute. Look at that. Do you see these lines? I do. See these right angles? Yes. That's not found in nature. You, yeah. Look at these right angles. My goodness. These are rooms. These are compartments. Keep going. So there you have the bow of the ship again. And there you have just a view of greater Ararat and lesser Ararat. And here you again, you have the ark. Wonderful. The ruins of the ark with the mountain above it. I think it's amazing. Rick, it is amazing. And your team and you went there. And you can, know, can you see how rugged that is? Oh, it looks very rugged. I can't imagine being there. But. And, and I know you're from Colorado Springs. Oh yeah. But I'm gonna tell you, you feel the altitude here. Do you okay, really? stop that. This is, the, this is the stern of the ship. Can you see it's rounded? Yes. That's the way ancient ships were. It goes all the way up to a peak. My goodness. And you see how this side has kind of fallen out? I do, yep. It's because of that rock. That's the rock in the middle. That's the rock in the middle. It sh the, shape, the shape used to come like this. But that rock has kind of caused this side to fall out. And they've actually drilled into this side of the ship. Okay. And they've pulled out animal remains. They've pulled out pieces of antlers. Really? Why would those things be in a geological formation? Unbelievable. And when you walk along this, can you see here? Right yeah. here? Yes. These are, this is not natural in nature. These are like ribs, something yes. along the side. Slate ribs. And because of the ground penetrating radar that they've done and all the ERT scans, when you walk over this, even with a simple metal detector, yeah. about every two meters, you hit parallel lines. And that's not geologic. That's impossible. That's impossible. This is Noah's Ark. <laughs> this is amazing. Can I show, tell you one more thing? Yeah, please. Right at the top of that ridge where I told you that Iranian guard post is, yes. that's the old Silk Road. Really? Yeah, that's it. Really? It runs right along that ridge. The Silk Road is like the number one place of commerce. Of like, course. Yeah. And the ancient writers told us that when people were taking the Silk Road, 
they would walk right down the hill from the Silk Road to visit the remains of the Ark. I mean, there are scores and scores of records about it. And they would take pieces of the Bidicum, that's what the Bible calls it, which is the tar. Uh -huh. And they would make little amulets out of it and keep it as souvenirs. My goodness. And many, many people traveled that road. It was a destination. It was a destination on the way as you journeyed on the Silk Road. So why are we looking for it on the peak of Mount Ararat when we have these voices given to us from history? Rick, I'm so excited to go to this place with you. You'll like it. I, I'm, I can't wait to go. Thank well, you for inviting me. Yeah, you're very welcome. What else do we have? Yeah, let's keep going. Oh, that's the original photograph. That's the original? Yeah, that's the original photograph that was taken 19, in 1959. Okay. And by the way, it showed up in Life magazine in 1960. Did it really? That's how this began to get attention. So look at that. Do you see how perfectly preserved that is? Absolutely. But here's that big rock. And you can see that, th that this side out. is a little deteriorated. But this was sent to Dr. Brandenburg at Ohio State University. He is the man who identified the Cuban missile sites during the Kennedy administration. Is that right? There was nobody better at viewing aerial photography. My he was goodness. the best. Wow. And when he saw this, he said it undoubtedly is a ship. See the peak? Well, I mean. And the stern, it's exactly the shape exactly. of an ancient ship. Exactly. And it matches exactly the size in the book of Genesis. It does. And can you see it's in a mud flow? Yep, you can, yeah. There's another thing too. If this was a natural formation, it wouldn't have a pointed top at the top. <laughs> the top would be rounded and the point would be on the bottom. Amazing. This is the ship literally sailed up into and just landed right there. Amazing. Even if it was natural, naturally it could not be formed like this. It would be reversed. <laughs> that is remarkable. It had been blunted down. Yes. Yeah. Amazing, right? All right. I Should don't know keep... what else we have. Let's here. see what else we have just for a moment. Ah, this shows what they're doing. These are, this is how they do how the they scan. I mean, they have been all over this site over and over and over and everyone is like, this is not natural. <laughs> we're, we're seeing things that n nature cannot produce. Wow. So Rick, what we've done is we've just compiled some of your, your footage from your journeys. And right. I'm just asking you to comment on it. So, Well, and what I don't have to show you is the results, the new readings of the scans. Even new. Oh my goodness. They are just... This is probably the size of the ship. This okay. Is, this is an idea of what... So you see that atrium on the top? Yep. That's what you see here in the middle of the formation. Anyway, it was enormous. Oh, just, just enormous. Amazing, Rick. This was probably the atrium, which is all collapsed. It's and all that's fallen. probably where Noah and his But it's boys still took raised, pieces. which that's fascinating. You can still see that it's My there. My goodness, Rick. And the new and the new readings show this corridor running all the way through the middle. <laughs> is that amazing? That's amazing. Now people have said, well, why don't they excavate? Right. Well, First of all, because it's so fragile, it would destroy it. It would just destroy it. But there are talks about going in from the side, okay. doing something from the side, but not from the top. Okay. And uh, early on when Ron Wyatt first came, uh -huh. the Turkish uh, team used dynamite to blow out a part of it. Stop, stop there for a minute. See this? Yes. That's where the shepherds have been walking. Up That's, with, got and, it. And they actually come up here and graze. Really? And so they've kind of destroyed these two parts of it. Now, Rick... I, I think I know the answer. That's the bow. Are you able to go there? Like I filmed right on the peak. Oh, of it. come on! Oh, That's, it's it's wonderful. That is awesome. So you physically stood there. Let's keep going. I want to see more of this. If we have more, just the sky. So line. that's the view from Noah's Ark of Mount Ararat. Oh, of Mount Ararat in the distance. Interesting. And the village of Ada is right over here. It's in the valley down there. I hadn't realized how close to the Iran border this was. Oh, it's right on the border. Fascinating. It's right on the border. Let's see a little bit more, Elijah. I wanted to see what else we have. I think there's a photo in here or a video of you and your team standing together. Stop this. Oh, look at that. This is not the ark. Okay. This is nearby. This is a wall of stone covered with sea life. With sea life? Yeah. It has uh, seashells. It has sea urchins, it has starfish. And guess what's really interesting? Some of them are not petrified. They look like you can just pick them right up off the, bo the bottom of the sea. They're as, they're as fresh as they were as the day they were laid there. That is amazing. It is amazing. I mean, I, that's amazing. They, they look like they were just laid there and they've just dried out. Wow. They've been laying there for 4,400 years. Wow. Okay, let's see what else we got here. That's just right around the corner from the ark. Right around the corner. <laughs> and that's Mount Ararat. And 
then you'll see lesser Ararat. Lesser Ararat. Uh-huh. Genesis the ark April. rested upon the mountains of Ararat. Come on. All right, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Okay. What do you think about that? I like it. Uh, Rick, I am so intrigued by Noah's Ark and then you discovering the truth of it. And I just want to thank you for walking us through some of that. And to be really honest, I'm really excited to go there with you. We're going to have a blast. I, I, I believe there's part of the reason is, is because I believe you have stepped into with your apostolic calling, your, uh, your voice to the planet, really. You stepped into a prophetic sign and wonder that I believe will be the days of Noah. We're talking about that. I believe it too. But you know, you were, you were preaching recently, and uh, if you don't mind me saying this, but you were preaching and suddenly there was a power outage. Yeah. And <clears throat> the reason I bring this up is because, you know, you were just preaching, you were with uh, George and Terry Pearsons, just wonderful people of God, and you were preaching and suddenly the lights went out. And as you were doing it, you were preaching on this topic, but you were talking about the days of Noah. I was. And when it happened, um, I know that it was what it was for the meeting, but the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Rick is a sign and a wonder. This message is a sign and a wonder. The days of Noah, we're going to be plunged into a time of darkness, but there's light and hope even in it as it came back on again. Can we talk about that in another program? Yes, sir. But I want to tell you one more thing. Yes, please. Why did the ark land there? I don't know the answer to that. Oh, I want to tell you. Well, please do. God is very calculated in everything he does. Okay. Dates, times, places, they're all important in the plan of God. Yeah. Well, the, the area of Mount Ararat was originally called Uratu. Okay. That was the original name. In fact, the word Ararat is a derivative of that word. Okay. The Uratu kingdom is one of the oldest kingdoms on the face of the planet. Really? And guess what was located there? Tell me. The Garden of Eden. <laughs> what? The Euphrates River flows right into that area. And all of the, the headwaters, which are of the rivers described in the Garden of Eden, they're all there. Right there. They're all there. And so the Garden of Eden, scholars now know, probably began in the lower mountains of what is today Armenia and okay. ran all the way to the sea in uh, Iraq. Okay. It was a very, the Garden of Eden was not a little tiny garden. It was a very large area. Okay. And it became the Urartu Kingdom. Okay. That is this area. So when God put Adam into the garden, God said to Adam, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth. Whenever God brought Noah to start things all over again, he, brought, he caused the current to carry the ark to the very place where it all originally began. And God said the same words he said to Adam, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. It was almost like God, as only God could do, brought Noah and his family back to the starting place and said, now let's start all over again. And I'm going to say the same words to you that I said to Adam, let's start again in the same place. Again. Again. Oh, we could get into that, right? That's what God does for all of us when we mess up. So powerful. He'll bring us back and say, okay, let, let's start again. That is so powerful. I, I hope you're getting something out of this. Rick, we got to continue this conversation. Let's do it. Okay. Let's, uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. Okay. We'll broadcast again tomorrow. I want you to, I, I want to continue. I want to get in the days of Noah. I want to talk about the prophetic significance of this. Okay. Because I believe the Lord is, is working through your life as a sign and wonder. I believe the ark has reappeared as a prophetic statement that it's the end of the age. Oh, we're going to get into this. It's, I mean, why would suddenly it appear and, it, and now everybody, I mean, it's been encased in mud for thousands of years. Suddenly an earthquake shook it free. The first earthquake was in 1948, which is when Israel was being reestablished. Oh my goodness. Really? So it happened then? I didn't know that. Just about the time Israel's reestablished, suddenly the ark reappears. These are end time events. I am legitimately stirred up right now. We got to continue this. I, you guys, let me look right at you. Listen, if you're blessed like I am, and I'm legitimately feeling the power of the Holy Spirit in this conversation, I want to say to you, please repost this, share this somewhere. Somebody's going to get blessed by this information. I hope you share this with someone so they can go back and watch Rick explain this journey because I believe it's leading somewhere. Now, we're going to be back again tomorrow talking about this and the prophetic significance of it. I hope you'll join us. And let me say this to you. If you're a partner or a friend of this ministry, thank you. And if you want to become part of our partner family and help us keep going and building and expanding, please become one today by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword give to 719 259 
0029. But really what I want to talk about is Rick's upcoming book. It's not out yet, but he's going to begin to go into this. But I think um, Last Day's Survival Guide would be a good book for people to oh, it's, get a, it's great for anybody. I think it'd be a great running start at some of this too, just to it know would. the times and it seasons would. we're in. It would. Renner.org. Yes. So please go to Renner.org, get Last Day's Survival Guide, and I think it'll be a great blessing to you. Rick, thank you for being here today. It's, it's been fun. We're going to continue. Okay. All right. God bless you. Please watch this. I want to say a very special thank you to our partners. Whether you've been a partner with us from the very beginning, or if you've recently become part of our partner family, we simply want to say thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you because it means so much that you're standing with us. We're accomplishing a lot together. And I'll tell you, if you're interested in becoming part of our partner family, I'd encourage you to go to josephz.com or text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. You know, we want to welcome you to the family and we will be calling you. If you become a partner, we call you regularly and we love talking to you. Our team calls you. It's not a call center. It's our team. We love our partners. I hope you'll consider it. I hope you're praying about it and I hope you become a part of our partner family today. Have you noticed the collision of good and evil, light versus darkness? It's happening every day right in front of us. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Breaking Hell's Economy. It's a prophetic book dealing with this exact issue. What we're facing right now is a collision of kingdoms. It's the kingdom of darkness versus God's kingdom. It's the kingdom of light versus the gates of hell. And what you're seeing is this collision taking place, but we are promised that the church, the called out ones, would overcome and we would never be taken over by the gates of hell. In the times we're living in, you can see incredible, outstanding breakthrough in every area of your life. Much like the children of Israel that went through the darkness and shined as a light in Goshen in the middle of difficulty. This book is a prophetic book for you and your family to thrive in the middle of difficult times. You know, there's nothing new under the sun, and that's what we're seeing over and over again is this challenge. You've seen the Great Depression back in the 20s and 30s. You've seen wars and world wars and many things that have come against society. And this pattern repeats itself. And I'm here to tell you today, even Jesus dealt with the same issue that we're facing today when he was a child. Many people have been through this before, and the outcome determines what you believe. What you believe and what you know will bring a great outcome for you. And this book is a prophetic book that will help you navigate and break out of this present evil age. Get ready to be the light in darkness. Get ready to be the light in Goshen that God has called you to be. Breaking Hell's Economy is for you. I encourage you to order your copy today.